All right, what do we have here? We have a, uh, a diagram of meiosis. And wow, look at all the steps. Twice as many as mitosis. Fact is, there's a meiosis 1 and a meiosis 2. Now, you're going to have to learn all these steps. Uh, no, you need to know something about it. I haven't, uh, in the last few years, asked students to diagram this out. I may start again one of these days, but not this time. But let's get the basic gist of what's going on. First of all, the most important thing is the bottom line. What happens during meiosis? Alleles are thoroughly shuffled. Alleles are thoroughly shuffled. Yes, they are. And uh, guaranteeing that when you get to the end over here, what are these things? They are gametes. At least in the animal kingdom, they're gametes. And uh, you say, are they something else in some other kingdom? Yes, they are. But we'll just stay with gametes for now. And so, what does it guarantee about these gametes? It guarantees that there's an infinitesimally small chance of any two gametes having exactly uh, the same set of alleles. And so, uh, and then of course, meiosis occurs in both parents. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. Some randomness about which egg meets which sperm. And uh, so, so what does that guarantee? That no two full siblings will have exactly the same uh, batch of alleles. And uh, and so, uh, but you knew that. You know, you look different than your full siblings. Why is that? Meiosis in both parents. Uh, of course, if you have an identical twin, they will have exactly the same set of alleles that you do. But otherwise, infinitesimally small chance that you'll have exactly the same alleles as a full sibling, courtesy the process of meiosis in both parents. Let's take a closer look at some of the things going on in meiosis. Uh, we have, uh, first of all, there's uh, meiosis 1 and there's a meiosis 2. Each one has its own prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. And so uh, we have, uh, here's meiosis 2, it's prophase 2, metaphase 2, and so forth. What's going on here? Let's get the big picture. First of all, we have something that looks like a family reunion. Uh, homologous chromosomes getting all wound around each other and uh, getting all huggy and kissy. Uh, what are these? These are 23, you know, 23 homologous pairs, each finding the long lost friend, long lost partner, their buddy, and, uh, and getting all wrapped around them. And things will happen that we'll talk about in a second, but let's continue on across. That's prophase one, metaphase one. They're really still kind of wrapped around each other, but they are pulled to the equator of the cell. Anaphase one, the long lost friends are once again long lost uh, homologous pairs. Uh, they hadn't seen each other in ages, and off they go again. They are separated. So, prophase one, they meet the homologous pairs, wrap themselves around each other. Metaphase, they're taken to the equator of the cell. Anaphase, separated. What happens in the second half is kind of like mitosis. Well, it's very much like mitosis. Uh, by this time, we're up to two cells, going to four, and in the process, sister chromatids are separated. So, meiosis one, homologous pairs are separated. Meiosis two, sister chromatids are separated. Each ends up in a separate gamete, and along the process, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Let's talk, look at the first shuffling. Actually, there is a picture of it, a diagram that's on that page. Let's back up. And uh, that first shuffling is called crossing over. Uh, here we see it occurring. Ah, oh, there it is right there. It's the first shuffle. It should be at the very beginning, right? And so what's going on? Well, um, uh, first of all, when does it occur again? During what phase? Prophase? If you just answer prophase, will that be a problem? Yes, because... Meiosis has two prophases, so this occurs during prophase one at the very beginning. And what happens when these uh, homologous pairs find each other and get wrapped up around each other? Well, here we have a kind of a diagram. It's on that same page in your textbook. And we have a representation of a homologous pair. And they're duplicated in this uh, diagram. One says maternal, one says paternal. What's that all about? Well, these, you know, mother, father, the uh, these are the chromosomes that came from one from mother, one from father. Are these the original chromosomes that came in the egg cell or sperm cell? Oh no, those are long gone. These are copies of copies of copies of copies of copies of copies. But if that copying process has gone correctly, these will, these homologous chromosomes, will be exactly like the ones that came from mother and father. So here they are getting all wrapped around each other, and really it's much more than this. 
and they get all wrapped around each other and the color coding represents what happens. What is happening now? Sections of homologous pairs trade places. And uh, so, is this one on the left exactly the way it came from mother anymore? No, it's not. And the same thing for the one on the right. It's not the same as it came from father. This is called crossing over sections of homologous pairs change places. And the thing is, in different uh, cells that are undergoing meiosis, crossing over occurs in different ways, different places, different length segments, uh, different numbers of pieces, and so forth, in every uh, in all the chromosomes in which uh, that are undergoing meiosis. So, uh, this is a first shuffle, but it's a big shuffle. This would be uh, enough, really, to guarantee that you and your full siblings would not look exactly the same. So, the first shuffling allele of alleles crossing over. But what about the second shuffle? The second big shuffle occurs metaphase one, anaphase one. What's happening here again? The homologous pairs are kind of still, uh, kind of, you know, kind of joined together. They make it to the equator. They're pulled to the equator. Then they go their separate ways, and they have been changed by crossing over. But they're still sort of like they came from mother and father. So we've got 23 chromosomes going this way and 23 going that way, right? In people, and so. You suppose all the original mother ones go one way and all the original father ones go the other way? Not hardly. For each one, it's a 50-50 chance. Mother, father, father, mother, which way they go? So that's 23 pairs of chromosomes, 23 50-50 chances. Gee, how many possible combinations is that? Uh, you can do the math. It's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 23 times. Well over 8 million possible combinations here. So we've got crossing over that does some shuffling. We've got, uh, we've got now this what's called independent assortment creating many more possibilities, over 8 million combinations there, and more combinations as meiosis continues. Again, bottom line, what are we saying meiosis does? It thoroughly shuffles alleles, absolutely guaranteeing that uh, no two siblings are going to get exactly the same batch of alleles because meiosis occurs in both parents. Unless, of course, we have identical twins. All right, that's our little overview of meiosis, and that's.